Hello and welcome to Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez. The Downtown Lincoln Association has been promoting the heart of our city for 50 years. Downtown has seen many changes over those decades, but it's now more vibrant than ever. Here to talk about the future of downtown and the role of the DLA is Todd Ogden. He's the DLA Deputy Director. He's been there 11 years already. 11 years. Oh, wow, that's quite a while. Yeah. Now, you had a big event uh, in October to celebrate the mm -hmm. 50th anniversary. We'll be taking a look at some of those activities as we go on. But let's talk just a little bit about the history. Yeah. Founded in 1967, and the focus really was the merchants. It was, yes. Yeah, we were kind of founded uh, off the basis of the O Street Gang, and uh, we wanted to provide a common voice for the downtown area. So in 1967, the Lincoln Center Association was created, and that was uh, essentially the inception of the Downtown Lincoln Association. And Lincoln was very different in those days. I think about all the big department stores yes. were really the, the, the the core of the city. Mm -hmm. So things have changed a lot. What's what's the purpose of today's DLA? Uh, purpose of today's DLA is uh, really similar actually to the roots of the Lincoln Center Association. So we were founded upon providing a common voice for downtown and that's still our number one goal. We want to be the common voice for downtown Lincoln and we have a very representative board of directors to make sure that we're enacting um, activities and procedures that benefit downtown as a whole to help downtown Lincoln continue to grow. So that's definitely our first priority. We want to activate downtown. We want to provide that common voice and we just want to make it a good place to live, work and play. There are a lot of events downtown. Do you play a role in all those different events that happen or more in promoting those events? Uh, a combination of everything. There's certain events, um, like we'll talk about, I'm sure, in a little bit, Shop the Blocks and Haymarket Unwrapped, these shopping events that we're directly involved with. We sponsor a lot of events, whether it be Zoo Fest, which has been going around for a long time. We work closely with uh, here in Nebraska for Lincoln Calling. That's one of our favorite events downtown. And um, Jazz in June, we do the market for that. So we're involved in various ways. If it's downtown, we're going to try to be involved as much as possible to make sure um, we're bringing more people to the area. Well, D DLA is also involved in maintenance, mm -hmm. economic development, advocacy. What are some of your, your major efforts and initiatives right now? Right now, some of the biggest initiatives and efforts are really um, from, from a management side, it's really looking at and looking into the future for our next master plan. In 2005, we conducted our first downtown master plan in quite some time. There hadn't been one done for at least, I think, 20 or 30 years. So it had been a long time and we were ready to update what's going to happen downtown. And here we are about 12 years later and so much has been done with that master plan that we're ready to kind of look into the future and say, what's the next steps for downtown Lincoln? We've experienced about a billion dollars of development since 2000. 10 projected into 2020 and we want to figure out with that development how do we react to the market and what is best for downtown and how can we make sure that it continues to be active and provides enough for everybody to want to live downtown and work downtown. Has downtown developed kind of according to the plan or has it veered off in some directions? A lot of the plan is kind of done so there's been a lot of really key elements. I mean it was it was created to have certain catalyst developments for example where Tower Square where is now in the Larson building, that was one of the really key catalyst projects that was um, pointed out in the master plan. The arena, a uh, lot's happened since that arena vote um, in 2010, and the arena, um, that I believe the master plan was one of the first place that pinpointed out that West Hay Market area for um, the arena to potentially be located. So will there be a new one done then in, uh, say, 2020? We hope, yeah, definitely by 2020, we definitely hope to have uh, the next master plan ready to go and um, start being implemented. And it's fun to think about that one might involve driverless cars and as uh, Paul Jarrett said, maybe some portable jet packs that people yes. can get around downtown. Yes, we want a lot of different things. So yeah, we did just celebrate our 50th anniversary in October and we did um, take a moment to really reflect on the past. We celebrated the present and really looked into the future. So a lot of this master plan talk and you know having people like Paul and Stephanie Jarrett with their activities with Bulu Box, uh, people like them are helping grow the downtown area. So we're really excited to see what the next businesses are and the businesses that we do have grow um, to make the area continue to stay vibrant. 
do you have any idea how many businesses are in downtown? Yeah, we have about 950 to 1,000 businesses downtown, um, and that's through about 500 different property owners. So we have quite a mix of downtown businesses, and it's changed over the last 10 years. Certainly, we've definitely seen um, our fair share of startups, for example. The startup community is certainly is growing, and downtown seems to be a mecca for that area. And really, it's the sports technology we've seen a lot. I mean, a lot of people have heard mm -hmm. about the Huddle headquarters. That's just one example. But we continue to see other businesses grow and looking forward to having more businesses like that join the area. Um, we've also seen more retail services come into the area, more entertainment. With the arena, you're going to have more entertainment. Uh, escape rooms, for example, or other types of entertainment we're seeing downtown. So we definitely welcome um, that kind of a variety into the downtown area. And the Lead Center, of course, has continued to be uh, focus of that entertainment scene as has the Grand Theater. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, having the mainstays continue to produce top uh, and bring in top shows and top talent has been huge. Having Sheldon's Art Gallery and the Lead Center and the Rococo Theater, um, Children's Museum, having those stay downtown and continue to grow um, has been really integral in making downtown stay prominent for the Lincoln area. Another huge trend is people living downtown. How many people now call downtown Lincoln home? Uh, in about 2010, we had about 3,000 uh, residents downtown. We're looking here probably in the next couple of years, especially we've had a lot of student housing growth, probably up to uh, 4,000 residents now. And I, I think we want to grow that and it might double to 6,000 here um, in the next five to seven years. So really seeing that amount of residential grow can only help grow other sectors in the downtown area as well. So the more residents we have, the more we can support things like grocery stores that everybody wants downtown when they live and we're excited that the first downtown mm -hmm. grocery store in a while is going to come to the area here on Canopy Street and more services like that will continue to pop up downtown if we have more residents and more people living in the area. Well city government has certainly partnered with the DLA on a lot of initiatives and one of those was the N Street bike path, um, a cycle track we'll yes. call it. Um, how important is um, providing uh, accommodations for biking downtown? Accommodations for biking and just multimodal transportation in general has been huge. I mean, the, the N Street specifically has been a good thing because it connects the Billy Wolf Trail on the east and the Jamaica North Trail on the west. So really, we have an area now, we have a wonderful bike city and be able to not um, have to go around downtown and really connect through downtown and have bikers feel comfortable to go through the area has been huge um, and the numbers have been growing on the bike lane, I know that uh, the city has been looking at statistics and those numbers are really strong on how many bikers are using it. Our offices are right there, so we've definitely seen s several hundreds of people a day using that bike lane. So we really feel encouraged about it and it's definitely helped from an economic development standpoint. There's certain developments and there's businesses, um, from what we heard, we had some larger employers that ha they're hiring employees that are looking for other modes of transportation other than cars, mm -hmm. and bikes is definitely one of them. And being more bike friendly helps them recruit businesses and helps them recruit employees to want to come to the area. So it's definitely been a good tool for us to use. Well, the other thing we're getting mm -hmm. is the, uh, and this will have to take the, the place of those uh, rentable jet packs for a while, but the, the bike share program is going to be huge for downtown as well. Yes, yes. We're hoping by this spring we're going to get uh, the bike share program lifted off, and Bike Link will be here. We're hoping to have about 100 bikes and uh, 15 to 18 stations around the downtown area. The university has been a huge partner. Spreetail has been a huge partner with that, where we're going to have uh, stations throughout downtown in the Telegraph District at the university campus and East Campus and Innovation Campus as well. So it's going to be a great way for the students and employees and visitors connect through the downtown area that continues to grow. So if, if you feel it's a little too far to walk, you can have these bike shares and get through there, especially on N Street too. You can feel comfortable biking down N Street and connect Antelope Valley and the West Haymarket can all through um, one system where you don't need a bike yourself. You can just hop on one of these bike shares and uh, get throughout downtown any way you'd like. And another huge area of collaboration has been parking. There's yes. I think there's plenty of parking downtown. If you're not fixated on parking at a meter, there's plenty of yes. parking. 
I, I never have a problem, but I, I do like the city garages a lot, especially that first hour free. Yes, first hour free has been huge. I mean, when you provide parking supply, you want to have incentive to bring people into the garages, especially in a place like Lincoln, so we can free up the meters for um, the short stays and for retail and restaurant patrons. Um, but with the garages, it's enticing more people to come downtown and more people are using the garages with first hour free. And DLA has always been heavily involved with making sure we try to do as much with parking as possible. Well, still maintaining uh, active first floor um, businesses and retail and with all these new garages you have active first floors and parking on the upper floors and really enough to help maintain that first hour free program and want to continue to grow through parking so we can help uh, encourage more again more employees and residents to come to the area. Well one of the first projects that you worked on as in your role with uh, DLA is the homeless issue because we do still have people downtown um, there's, there's a big segment of people in Lincoln who are poor, um, many homeless in our community, and we tend to see them downtown. What is, how is DLA working with, through that issue? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really multifaceted issue. Um, certainly it's a big issue in any city you're going to be in, and every city has different types of issues. For us in downtown, a lot of it is education awareness of the different types of homeless and the different types of panhandling. Um, about 11 years ago when we implemented the panhandling awareness campaign, a lot of what we found is people didn't really know the difference between crisis and chronic homelessness. So educating the community on the differences between that and those who are panhandling might not necessarily be a crisis homeless situation and definitely educating the community to make sure that we help support our agencies that are helping the homeless, whether it be People City Mission or the Homeless Coalition or Matt Talbot and uh, different places like that that really benefit um, the homeless community and the, the suffering community to help help grow and um, get back on their feet. And that's something downtown where we want to focus on. Certainly from a panhandling standpoint, it's really about that's where the activity is. So panhandlers go to active zones, and that's what we've seen. Um, in the past 10 years ago, the heaviest zone was 14th and P Street, and that's primarily where most of the UNL residents were coming. So a lot of this was basing education on students. Students are the most willing to give money um, to the homeless. And a lot of it is maybe um, directing awareness toward the best place to give that money. You know, it's hard to tell mm -hmm. somebody not to give the homeless money, but it's very easy to tell people to donate money to these agencies that are doing a wonderful job for the area and make sure they help uh, the people that they're looking to help. Well, as we mentioned earlier in the show, um, the face of retail downtown has changed a lot. The big stores are gone. It's more the specialty stores, yeah. the really unique and local and fun stores. Talk a little bit about your retail strategy and uh, the, maybe also the P Street Retail Quarter. Yeah, yeah. Um, like we mentioned before, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary. And in 1967, downtown was really all about the department stores. You had the Miller and Paynes, the Hovland Swansons, and mm -hmm. a, a lot of those different type of places people remember shopping. Well downtown not only for Lincoln but all around the country have changed into areas where really Lincoln and downtown Lincoln um, provides a mixed use center and with that it's going to be a lot of smaller specialty type retail. We're very proud of the retailers we have which is why um, about um, I guess 10 Essentially, we've had 10 Shop the Blocks events where we've created an event, Shop the Blocks, to help support um, that independent retail in the downtown area so people know you can shop downtown. We have over 20 stores that are involved in Shop the Blocks downtown in the P Street District um, that generates about $50,000 in sales each time we do a Shop the Blocks event. So people are looking to spend money, um, they're looking to shop and have fun, and uh, Shop the Blocks is the perfect way to show, hey, downtown Lincoln still has shopping, um, and it's definitely going to make um, your night and, and every shopping experience you have unique because we do have very unique different types of stores. That's right. Boutiques, jewelers, bookstores, Husker Apparel, specialty shops, they're staying open late mm -hmm. for Shop the Blocks. The check-in is at 4.30 yep. at, uh, at the um, Single Barrel. Again, it's uh, Thursday, November 16th, so month uh, month before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Perfect time to get, get it all taken care of that night. Special discounts, giveaways, appetizers. It's a really fun event. A lot of people enjoy going with groups of friends. Yeah, it's, it's a great night out, and I think uh, more people are bringing their significant others as they have found it's easy to really have a fun mm -hmm. night, whether there's, uh, there's lots of different uh, beverages and food options. So you can really have a full course meal if you go out through all these shops. And actually, two years ago, we started 
kind of uh, a separate uh, shopping event, Haymarket Unwrapped. Uh, we also have mm -hmm. several specialty stores in the Haymarket and have partnered with LHDC um, in their Breakfast with Santa event to have a shopping event in the Haymarket specifically too. So that's in uh, typically the second Saturday in December and that's another event we look to bring people to shop in the Haymarket area as well. Well then let's not forget Small Business Saturday, the Saturday after yes. Thanksgiving. That's a time to go out and support our locally owned merchants and uh, um, that's a great promotion as well. Yes, yeah, so a lot of our shops get involved with the Small Business Saturday activities and they're going to continue to do that this year. We were just talking with Ann Ringline, who is with Lincoln Running Company, and she's kind of um, heading a group of people to make sure we offer um, different types of things on Small Business Saturday, different incentives, and um, just another way to grow shopping in the downtown area during the holiday season. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end today by asking you a really tough question. What does downtown mean to you? Downtown, to me, um, like we've said before, I've been here for 11 years, and one thing I've recognized in the downtown area, it, it's, it's the people. Downtown is about bringing together different types of people all into one spot. It gives you different opportunity to meet something, somebody in something that you may not have seen before. So that's, to me, downtown's about diversity and um, overcoming adversity and growing, and there's all sorts of things, but at the end of the day, it's really all about the people and the people that populate the area. Todd, thank you so much. Uh, we want to give a shout out to Terry Uland as well, who was the director and he couldn't be with us today, but you were a pretty good substitute. So well, I hope you. so. I hope <laughs> thank so. Thank you very much, Todd. <laughs> um, downtown Lincoln is a great place to go and people can check out more at downtownlincoln.org. That's where you'll find out about the Downtown Lincoln Association, all the great activities going on. There's a calendar of events. There's a list of special projects and initiatives. So. And then we'll all look forward to getting involved in the new downtown master plan coming up. Crossing my fingers for jetpacks. Yes, right? I think they're coming. We'll see. Uh, maybe not by 2020, but we think by 2022 they should be ready to go. Okay, I'm marking my calendar. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Todd. Thanks, Todd. DowntownLincoln.org, again, is the website for the Downtown Lincoln, or downtown Lincoln Association. And when we come back, Jeff Maul will join us from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. But first, we're going to take a look at what's going on at some of our local art galleries. Stay with us. Welcome back to Out and About. Jeff Mall joins us now from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Jeff, I'm wearing my glasses today. I want to make sure I get everything right. <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. It's we a busy do. time coming into the holidays. Talking about Christmas already. Yes. And in addition to Shop the Blocks yep. that we talked about in the first segment, there's lots of other opportunities to go shopping. Yeah, there's a lot of great opportunities coming up this holiday season. A lot of great chances for people to plug in with local artisans. One such which is the uh, fourth annual holiday market craft and vendor fair at the firefighters reception hall. Should be a lot of fun there. Local arts and craft, uh, free coffee and hot apple cider, cash bar. I've never That's seen right. a cash bar at a market. Oh, of course there are. Really? Does yes. that encourage buying after a certain point? For some people it may. <laughs> so that's not, for me, hot apple cider does it. That sounds so, so good right now. Yeah, it does sound really yes. good, doesn't it? And lots of uh, things going on out at South Point. They're going to have the Santa station and the mistletoe mailbox. That's right. Santa makes his annual appearance at South Point Pavilions. The mistletoe mailbox allows you to drop your letter off for Santa Get it in early. His list is long. That's get right. Your, get your letters done, kids. And you can have, of course, your picture taken with Santa. You can even take your pets and have their picture taken Very with cool. Santa. Very cool. So that's kind of fun. The big celebration then when they light the giant tree at South Point is coming up. November 25th. That'd be the Saturday after Thanksgiving. And that means we get to honor Thanksgiving the way Thanksgiving should be honored. That's I'm a big right. proponent of that. November 25th, Santa will arrive at South Point Pavilions. Well, Thanksgiving's one of my favorites too. Me too. 
Is it the food? It. Is it the football? I think for me it's because my birthday's usually at that oh, time. Oh, wow. It just became about Diane now, didn't <laughs> yes, it? Yes, it did. Love it. Right. There's a couple of fun shopping adventures at the Lancaster Event Center. A very vintage Christmas market. If you want to pick up some uh, mm -hmm. kind of really cool antique items. Handmade also, gifts. Handmade gifts. And then um, shortly after that, back at the event center, they're going to be having a holiday spectacular. This has close to 100 unique arts and crafts exhibitors from Nebraska and surrounding states. So lots of fun stuff to buy out of the event Two center. Two good opportunities. The Lincoln Marriott Cornhusker is having a big event. This is when they illuminate their big tree. Yeah. Uh, lots of big trees around town. They're going to have cookies, cocoa, more hot, hot apple cider. That's Yum. right, and uh, vendors will uh, get a chance to uh, distrib distribute their wares as well as a friendly visit from Santa Claus. That will be at the Cornhusker, the Lincoln Marriott Cornhusker. And to not be left out of the buying binge here, the Quilt mm -hmm. Center mm -hmm. is having an art market. This is a benefit that they put on. for, the, for, for It's from the friends of the Quilt Center. Um, so artists from Iowa, Texas, lots of places. So lots of opportunities in the capital city to uh, get your shopping done early. Right, and I would encourage people while they're there shopping, get a chance to look around the International Quilt Study Center. It's an architectural marvel in itself. It really stands out right there on the corner of 33rd and Holdridge, but there's a lot of great opportunities to learn about the quilting history in the United States. That's right. We do want to mention also that their Why Quilts Matter series continues. Episode 9 is going to look at the quilt scholarship. This is how Quilts sort of became a legitimate topic for scholarly discussion. A discipline of sorts that That's they talk right. about, and a dozen or other in important disciplines from material culture to sociology will be discussed. All right, let's go to another museum then, the ne Nebraska History Museum. Take a trip <laughs> back <laughs> to <laughs> the <laughs> 70s. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did we really need that? No, I'm uh, kidding. It was kind of fun. That was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Bell bottoms. Yeah. Going to have a groovy time there. 70s boogie night over at the uh, Nebraska History Museum. Dance to the music from getting hipper, fun bunch, enjoy food and drink, and then take a stroll through the museum. Wish I'd saved some of those bell bottoms. Those were pretty keen. I bet we could find a pair. Yeah, probably. I'm sure I wouldn't fit in them right. anymore either. But Get tripping on the old bell bottoms. <laughs> we also want to, want to remind people about the really fun exhibit at the oh. Nebraska History Yay. Museum. Take another trip back in the 70s with this great kids program that happened on 1011. Calamity Kate's Yay. Cartoon Corral. Loved just, it. Just saw Lita herself at the Playhouse yes. yesterday. She's she's always out and about. So. And the uh, the George Shirley puppets, the puppets that were a big part of the show are going to be there. You know, I was on that show back in the 70s. I know. My first installment of live television and I, I remember being very nervous. Yeah. I sat there with my, probably my bell bottoms on at the time. <laughs> but, uh, Little tiny bell bottoms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> such a great time, Calamity Kate's Cartoon Corral. All right, don't miss it. It's up through June, so plenty yes, of time. Yes, a lot so. of time. All right, another museum, UNL Morrill Hall, and this is a really interesting science cafe coming up. These are kind of designed for adults. You mm -hmm. get some Raisin Cane's food, and then you look at science and natural history topics. This is going to be a chemical and biomolecular engineering professor talking about <laughs> understanding biology with Legos. Yep, a Lego um, kind of taking a look at a lot of things from pollution control, issues facing humans today, uh, plant and animal protection, and then using Legos as kind of the building block for how these things are all kind of carried through in today's society. It's very complex. Legos are for kids, but Legos can also be for adults at this event. I, I guess I always just thought they were fun. And you I get didn't some, know how useful they could be. And some chicken strips. <laughs> and chicken right? strips. Chicken strips, <laughs> strips too will be part of the cafe. Should be a lot of fun over at the History Museum, or UNL Morrill Hall. And Morrill Hall's three regular ongoing programs, of course, are coming up. Sunday with a Scientist is November 19th. Mm -hmm. Pop in Storytime on December 7th is going to focus on friendship. And then investigate second Saturday, snow tracks oh. is coming up December 9th. Did so. you just use the four letter word? Yeah, the one that begins snow. with S. Wow. Sorry about that. Wow. That's what they named the program. I couldn't help it. It's coming. It is coming. It is. All right. Also, winter is coming at the Pioneers Park Nature Center. This is a chance to go on a hike with Jamie and, and see what, uh, what's blooming this time of year, what wildlife is out how the wildlife get ready for the cold months ahead. Yeah, Pioneers Park Nature Center, meet at the Prairie Building. Just a lot of great hiking opportunities. Most people know Pioneers Park for everything but 
the nature center. They know the common spaces, the golf course, you know, a lot of the great sculpture and land that's out there. But take a walk through the nature center and you really kind of lose yourself in, in still a very urban environment, which is mm -hmm. Lincoln. And it's just a great protected park setting. Now, uh, Pioneers Park Nature Center is also taking a trip December 2nd. Actually, they're going to meet at the Ald Pavilion mm -hmm. at Antelope Park and mm -hmm. go down to a uh, refuge near St. Joseph, Missouri, for they have a big Eagle Days event down there. That's right, live Eagle shows, spotting scope stations, exhibits, and other activities. This program is geared towards adults. Reserve your spot today by November 27th to go see some great eagle watching opportunities. Lots of people are familiar with St. Joe because it's on the way to Kansas City. It is. It's, it's a great stop in and of itself. A very so. bustling community. All right, do-it-yourself holiday greenery workshop. If if you're not into shopping but like to make your gifts instead, this is a great thing to check out at the Nature Center. Yeah, one of the few things that we have coming up to talk about where you get to make a mess in someone else's home and take everything home. <laughs> it sounds good. The Lincoln Stars are in action at the Ice Box. They've got a lot of, are they matches or bouts? For we're going to go, we're going to go with hockey matches. Bouts, you could do that too, but sometimes when you get bouts, you talk about fights, which is, that happens at hockey. Lincoln Stars off to a great start this year. We love the new energy over at the Lincoln Stars new coaching, new administration. Folks, get out and enjoy the Lincoln Stars. It's great hockey action. Typically on Fridays and Saturdays, they'll throw in a Wednesday. I think we've got Wednesday, November 22nd in there versus the Tri-City Storm. Great hockey action. Give it a shot. All right. High school football is winding down, and the teams that make it all the way to the end get to play at the big house. That's right. And uh, this last weekend, as we're taping, we lost a couple teams. Uh, two or three teams in Lincoln fell out of the state high school football playoffs. But we are excited to focus our energy on the championship starting November 20th, Monday and Tuesday. Memorial Stadium, the best teams from across the state. We value the relationship that we have with the NSAA, so we'll be doling out our annual pizza feeds for those football players that visit, and a lot of times uh, they get a chance to thank us. So just uh, we thank them for being here, and, and good luck to all. And hopefully it's not too chilly at Memorial We've Stadium. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster the last few years. Another great NSAA program is their Unified Sports, uh -huh. and the bowling championships are coming to Sun Valley Lanes. This is this is really a great program, the Unified Sports. This is the second annual one that we have brought together. The NSAA, our friends at Sun Valley Lanes, as well as uh, Special Olympics Nebraska for the Unified Bowling Championship. Folks, mark on your calendar Monday, December 4th. We need fans in the stands to cheer on these athletes because I can tell you there's probably no better heartwarming experience out there. So if you're retired, have that day off. We'd love to see you out there to see some great bowling action. Or take the day off. This is oh. jo the Unified Sports joins people with yep. and without disabilities on the same team. So. It is. It's it's yeah, be a part of it. Like we were part of it last year, and it was so heartwarming. Like I said, and you know, people with disabilities. They really don't have bad days. Every day is a good day for them because they're living with a disability. And, and I've learned so much from hosting Special Olympics in years past. And you know they love your support because they're going to smile and they're going to give you that look and uh, embrace them and, and, and have fun at this event. December fourth at Sun Valley Lanes. Let's go to some kids' <coughs> events now. We've got a couple things at the Children's Museum. The Holiday Spectacular is December first. Yep. They haven't released many details no. on this Secretive. yet. So yeah, it's kind of a secret thing. You might want to make sure you get there and see what surprises they have in store. And then speaking of making a mess <laughs> at someone else's place, Candy House Fun <coughs> Shop is coming up. All you need is your creativity. Show up at the uh, Lincoln Children's Museum and they will supply everything you need to put together the perfect Candy Fun Shop house. It will be edible when you get home. The challenge is from the time you leave the museum, <laughs> When you get to the car, how much is actually making it home at that point? Are you talking about things falling off or being eaten off? Both. 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 Uh -huh. Right. The gumdrops. Oh, so good. Now, if you're not in the mood yet for the holidays, head to the Children's Zoo. The North Pole Express is headed down Candy Cane Lane to Santa's Village. That's right. Be careful not to fill up on the candy because your next stop is Mrs. Claus's Bakery to decorate your own cookie. Next, head to the gumdrop stage in Rudolph's Animal Kingdom building to encounter more of Santa's animal and zookeeper friends. Great unique event at an outdoor venue, the Lincoln Children's Zoo. Kids also enjoy Shrek. Adults enjoy Shrek too. Shrek the Musical Junior, uh, the Theater Arts for Kids, is bringing this to Christ Lutheran Church. Right, and we encourage people to be at least four years old to attend this production of Shrek. Should be a lot of fun at Christ Lutheran. Nebraska Wesleyan has a couple of productions coming up. One is Dancing at Lunasa. This is a uh, uh, play about an Irish family in the 30s, Five Sisters. This is an award-winning play. It's it's really a great show. I've seen it a couple times, and it's it's very memorable. Also, 
their annual tradition, the Christmas Carol, Love is it. coming up at Wesleyan as well. Come see Scrooge, the Ghosts, Snowflakes, and Carolers in all of their glory at Nebraska Wesleyan University's McDonald Theater. Love what they're doing at Wesleyan. We talk about them, it seems like, every year. Great set of shows that they do over there. And the Playhouse season is underway as well. Ethan Claymore is coming up um, in mid-November, and it's about a struggling air egg farmer, <laughs> an artist. It's a sort of comedy, sort of ghost story, sort of love story. So. It's an yes. interesting combination. That is, that is. And then the Playhouse, of course, is also celebrating celebrating Christmas with the most awful kids in the world, <laughs> the Herdmans. The her heard of them, yes. Taking over the Christmas pageant and chaos ensues. And uh, this, this, this play is always a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of great opportunities through the month of December to see this. So if you can't get to the first or second showing, there's about a week or so afterwards to, to see it. And then the Rep has a couple. The Repertory Theater has a couple of events coming up, starting with The Serpent. Mm -hmm. This is... I'm really anxious to see this. I talked to someone involved with the rep and said, explain this to me again. Contemporary improvisational theater exploring the book of Genesis. So I, it's gonna be uh, pretty interesting, I think. Well, and not only will you learn about that, but they'll compare it to what is today's modern experiences. So they'll kind of bridge that gap in there. Should be a lot of fun with the serpent. The rep is also celebrating the holidays with the holiday cabaret. They're going to be um, some of the past and current yep. rep performers, and also they're bringing in this female trio, the Lakeshore Dolls, yeah, all the way from Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Coming to Lincoln uh, Studio Theater at Temple Building at University of Nebraska. Tada has uh, come up with a cool yeah. idea that they have Lincoln's own late night TV show. Yes. Kind of a, like set up like right. a TV show with the house band and all that. They did one last summer, and they're going to do a holiday special coming up the weekend of December 7th through the 9th. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, Bob Rook hosts, mm -hmm. the comedian Julie Burney is hosting, the Bill Maltus hosts the band, 88 Keys announcer Rod Fowler, and uh, yeah, it's just a musical comedy yeah. variety. Audience involvement. Fun. Probably uh, some know, audience There's some involvement. audience involvement. If it is live TV in the Today Show or the Tonight Show mm -hmm. format, this sounds like a lot of fun. Had a chance to go to it over the summer and uh, had a pretty good time. They pulled good. it off quite well. Good. Anxious to see this one. Aubin Music has a couple of holiday events coming up. The first is your chance to belt out the uh, Messiah <laughs> with uh, in the community sing-along. Yep, and Aubin Music has partnered with the Food Bank of Lincoln who will be present, present to collect food and monetary donations to promote and share their vision of nourishing those that are hungry in the community. This is one of those timeless classics, a community sing-along. Everybody's encouraged to sing, stand up, and share in the holiday spirit. Then the Plymouth Choir, Ringers, and Aubin Music Orchestra are going to be doing a Christmas program called Savior of the Nations Come, an Aubin Music Christmas. And this is more of a spiritual event, mm -hmm. uh, music, stories from around the world, kind of a time to take a break from the hustle and bustle and get back to what the, what the holiday is about. Yeah, time to pray and just kind of sit back and then again take in the holiday spirit. Arts for the Soul also has an outstanding guitar trio coming. Uh, they are the hottest guitar ense ensemble in Canada, and they do <laughs> they have an interesting repertoire. Let's put it that they way. They do. They uh, d there spans everything from the fiery Spanish music to spaghetti western theme songs to rock classics like Tom Sawyer by Rush. I the way I picture this is going to be kind of like when I saw the two cellos do yes. the rock songs. Yeah, yes. this is going to be. The, did gonna you, be the, the guitars. Did you know going into two cellos that that's what you were going to get? Because so many people that I know left early because they thought it was going to be this nice night of cello music. Oh, no, I knew what to expect. Right, and that's yes. what so many people, and this will be a lot of fun, and uh, First Presbyterian Church 840 South 17th will host the event. All right, the Capital Jazz, you'll find them at Cottonwood Cafe every Monday night. Um, they're bringing in the UNL Jazz Ensemble on the 27th. Yeah, a lot of great things <clears> going on. First Monday night jazz jam, Monday night big band. This will take you through the middle of December. The Nebraska Brass is also getting into the holiday spirit with their Brass Christmas. Oh, I love the sound of Christmas carols played on those beautiful brass instruments. So it mm. should, be a, should be a great event. Good setting, First United Methodist Church. Maybe. Churches always do a great job with sound. The acoustics are usually pretty good. I like it. All right. Lincoln Symphony Orchestra is also decking the halls, and they've got a few surprises this year. Uh, they're going to have Lincoln's premier handbell choir. Bellissimo. Bellissimo as well as the Chase Dancers and the four-time national championship clogging group Tap This. Not once, not twice, three, four-time? 
four times, times. Four times. That, I love to watch clogging. That's right. It's so energetic. It wears me out just watching. And they're also going to be showcasing the Lincoln Suzuki students and the winner of the Young Artist Competition. Yeah, so very cool. Also at the Lead Center, Arturo Sandoval is coming up. He is a 10-time, not once, not twice, 10-time ten ten Grammy Award winner. This should be a lot of fun, and Sandoval continues to burn through Afro-Cuban grooves, tear up bebop lines, and honor the memory of Dizzy Gillespie. He's been compared to Dizzy Gillespie a lot. He's a, lot a of protege of yeah. that legendary jazz, jazz man. This so. sounds very, very exciting, very warm night. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, everyone knows the cartoon. At the Lead Center, you can see that cartoon come to life with the musical. And one of my favorites, Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> Yukon Cornelius. I, I love Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. The abominable snowman used to just terrify me. He had me, some really so. dark kind of uh, eyebrows. And well, some of the, you know, some of those old kids' cartoons were pretty scary when you look at them now. Yeah. Well, have you watched cartoons today? Um, not too much. Odd. <laughs> Odd. But anyway, this should be a lot of fun. And the Cornhusker Marching Band comes indoors for their annual concert at the Leeds Center. Here are the pregame show, right. the, all the halftime shows. Um, I, they should serve popcorn for this and Val's Pizza. You could use a hot dog and a Runza. That's right, right? some Runzas. This is a neat way to look back because when we started this off in the spring, we talked about their, their season preview, everything that they had worked on all summer. Now we're winding down to the end of the football season. This is a great chance for them to just unload with everything that they've done all year. And, just a great way to go into the holidays. Absolutely. Lots of other things going on in Lincoln. Jeff knows all about them. I do. Please stop down to our visitor center at 7th and P. You can give us a call at 434-5348. That number will ring you down to the visitor center at 7th and P. And if you're out there right now thinking, hey, I just want to jump online, Lincoln.org is our website. Do you have hot cider down there? You know, we need to work on it now that I know it's one of your favorites. We always have cold water. That's one thing. But well. We do, have, good too. we do have coffee and cider. All right, that would be awesome. Yes. Thank you very much. You bet. Thank you, Jeff, and we'll see you next month. All right. Coming up next, we'll have Tom Lorenz from Pinnacle Bank Arena in Pinewood Bowl. But first, a look at some of the other events going on at the Lancaster Event Center. Welcome back to Out and About. Tom Lorenzo joins us now with his official NCAA basketball. It's basketball season, That's so right. I wore my Husker shirt, and I got a basketball, and it's just that time of year, and it's kind of a fun time of year, so yes, I figured I'd is. highlight that a little bit. We still have football going on. We, we do. Still, we have basketball starting. That's right. And we just finished a huge, huge concert weekend here in Lincoln. Your, your crew, I tell you, they must be getting... They must be getting swelled heads because they've gotten so much praise for how they how they got those shows lined up. We have wonderful people that work with us, and it's amazing. They did some great things this weekend. Five shows, three days, 68,000 people. And then the highlight, not the highlight, but at least one of the really cool things was that on that turnover on Sunday from the 3 o'clock show to the 7.30 show, from the time the lights went out to the times we opened the doors, um, or lights came back on after the 3 o'clock show, 39 minutes, 26 seconds, we had the door open again. Even Garth commented about it. So I was going to say, we've gone this whole time talking about the big weekend, and it's like, and who, who was there again? Who yeah. was at the arena? <laughs> right, the, big, the big Garth weekend that people will probably be talking about for years. You know, it was everything that was advertised for. He was excellent. What a great performer. Uh, Trisha Yearwood was awesome. The, the crowds were, were tremendous. It was so much fun. It was what a great thing. Lincoln, this was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Now, the Journal Star had a big editorial. Downtown once again shines on eventful weekend. And they concluded by saying, you know, this has kind of become common. Yeah, you know. Which it, is really cool. It is, you know, that the fact that 
everyone did it, you know, and, and there's so many different people in the city that made a big deal. You know, the, the, the one thing that the article didn't mention was all the great police protection we had and the police co cooperation and everything. There was all the different departments got together. It wasn't just us, lead center, volleyball, bourbon. There was so many things. Mm. Anything you wanted to do this weekend, I think you could. That's right. Even stay home. That's right. And watch everything on TV. But it went so good. <laughs> uh, this is uh, it. Lincoln's grown up. It's a it's a big time city. Yes, it has. Also, congratulations are in order. Another prime site award. You know that it's maybe not a very uh, famous award, but for us, it's a big deal because this is kind of put together by uh, promoters and agents and production crews and things like that who have input into this award. And it tells us that we're doing a good job as far as taking care of the artist and the act and, and that the building works great. And so we're very honored. There was uh, 30 SMG buildings that were on the list. That's great. Uh, but uh, to be able to do that, it's a, it's a real feather in the cap of our staff. Uh, they keep the place clean and, and it's, you know, people appreciate it. So thank you for mentioning that. And this is the third year? Correct. For the yeah. Prime Site Award? That's yeah. great. Yeah, and it, it does. It goes on into a big book that all the promoters and agents look at and, and they can see, uh, you know, they know it's a quality place to be able to come. Um, you know, Lincoln didn't used to be on the map. Now we're pretty common to, uh, to a place to come. They know a little bit more about it, but it's sure nice to be honored that way. Well, congratulations to you and your staff. Let's talk about NU basketball now. The women open November 5th, the men open November 7th. Is this an actual ball that's going to be used in a game? This is a, this is a replica ball. It's, oh, a, you know, it's an okay. NCAA ball, and, uh, but I, I thought it would just uh, kind of represent. It, you know, this is that time of year where we really slip in. We do quite a few games, and it's an exciting time to do. You know, uh, the women's team will be a lot better this year. Amy and her staff have done a great job on recruiting. Um, quietly, confidently, Tim and his staff are talking about really good players. I think they feel very good going into the season. So we really look forward to this. It, mm -hmm. The building shows off well, and I hope people get a chance to come down and catch several games. There's some uh, preseason games, there's some uh, exhibition games that'll start with. And then on the 11th, uh, we really kick off with a doubleheader and start the season going. And then another doubleheader on the 19th with North Dakota and Creighton. Those are a lot of fun. And that's really what the rail yard is designed for. It really is. You go to something at the arena, you go to the rail yard, and then and a chance like that, you get to go back to the arena. Get to go back in, and we get a chance to turn things over. There's plenty of things to do in the meantime. It's just a fun area to be. Parking worked really well. I mean, we didn't talk about that on Garth, but I mean, that was a terrific thing. And the same thing with basketball. Mm -hmm. Even on a doubleheader day, you can park down in the rail yard, you can park in the festival space, and have a great day. And there's always Uber and Lyft. There that is. Can and you'll see more and more of those down there all the time. That's right. And uh, that's, that's a fun little addition, along with all the regular you know, taxis and cabs that are there. Well, in addition to football and basketball, we've got Girls' Day Volleyball coming up, and that's always such a fun weekend. We do. We just met with Jennifer the other day and got all our signals straight, and uh, we look forward to having all those great teams come in. It's a wonderful time for Lincoln to show off to the rest of the state. People come in, get to enjoy the rail yard. They come from all corners of the state. We'll have four games on, uh, on Thursday. We'll have six games on Friday, and then they move over to the Vandy for the finals. And it's just one of those great weekends where Everyone gets to come, they shop, they go to the restaurants, visit relatives, and uh, it's a great time for us to show off once again. And watch some maybe possibly future Huskers. I hope so. I mean, that's, uh, you know, Nebraska sure turns out a lot of great players, and, uh, you know, it's really a focus in this state. Well, Tom, it's that time of year we're already starting to talk about holiday events. That's and right. the first one we want to mention is the Starry Nights. This is uh, the People's City Mission event. We've done this for multiple years, and uh, it's wonderful to work with Pastor Tom and his staff to have them bring in all of these wonderfully decorated trees, lots of activities for families and kids. Um, you know, they get to, again, they come to the rail yard, spend some time over there, come inside. Uh, we love working with uh, Pastor Tom and all of the people over there, and it's certainly for a great cause. We hope that everyone stops by, and I think they're going to be open after the game on uh, uh, Friday, so that's a great time to stop by and check out some of those trees and maybe get a bid on, on one of them. Sounds great. Great. Jay-Z is coming December 6th. Do you think he'll do any holiday tunes? I, I don't know. He might. You know. <laughs> it's getting close that time. His, his Christmas album. <laughs> it was about the same time that uh, he was here the, the last time. He was here in 2013. He was part of our initial 10 shows in 80 mm -hmm. days and uh, so they'll they'll be back great show massive artist uh, one of the top recording artists of all time 
and uh, we look forward to this show. This is a big deal to have here in Lincoln. And then the Mixed Martial Arts has their annual holiday brawl. The Seasons Beating. Seasons Beating. What a great name. <laughs> That's funny. You know, we're really kind of lucky in Nebraska because we've got uh, Train who does, puts together these really good cards. Um, this is a lot of, uh, a lot of guys really have uh, rotated towards MMA. Um, we've seen some great boxing this year, but MMA is also very, very popular. Great athletes, multiple matches that night, a really nice setting. Uh, we put the ring in the middle right underneath the video board, floor seating. It's not an, un you know, it's not an expensive ticket. It's a fun night. All right. The Elks Children's Christmas Party is almost as old as Lincoln itself. It is. Thousands and thousands of children have enjoyed this event over the years. It's a great time for families to come down. Um, it's it's it, it fun to do. Kids get candy. There's some prizes and gifts. Uh, it's that perfect setting for you know getting ready for the holidays. The Elks are such a generous bunch of folks, and uh, we love working with them. This has got to be close to their 100th anniversary mm -hmm. show. I don't know exactly what the number is, but they are just the, the nicest people, and it's fun to see all the families get together. That's right. And, you know, peep, there were people, when, when the arena was first proposed, people said, well, I'll never go there. It'll be too expensive. You have so many events that are open to the public. That's right. And people can can come, but for free or for very just a few dollars. You know, we got a basketball open house practice. We've got you know things like the Elks and and People City Mission is just a small donation, and so there is. I, and I hope everyone feels welcome to come down, explore the arena, get used to it, and uh, enjoy all that area. Another fun family event in between all the Husker basketball. We're going to have some globe trotters here. It's great to have them back. I mean, that's kind of an annual thing anymore. They love coming back here. Uh, the globe trotters aren't just a bunch of guys anymore. There's a couple girls that play with them. So many talented folks. Such a great family event. And uh, you and I have talked about it. Something we grew up watching. You know, on Wide World of Sports. And uh, I can't wait to have them back. Mm -hmm. Then Avenged Sevenfold is a new announcement coming up February 8th. Tell us about this. They're, they're kind of a hard rock. They are. Dark, you know, we haven't on the done, dark side. Well, we haven't done a real, um, you know, we, uh, people have told us we need to do a real rock show. And this is it. Avenged Sevenfold, Breaking Benjamin, and Bullet for My Valentine, a really good lineup. Avenged Sevenfold played at Pershing Center some years back. We used to do a lot of those shows. The Blaze was always a great part of uh, promoting those. So we look forward to having this in there. It's selling extremely well. Great. It'll be a great time in the middle of the winter to kind of get over and rock out one night. Okay. Almost as big as Garth Brooks' weekend will be the return of Pink. Oh, what a great thing to get her back again. And if you didn't see the show the first time around, I'm sure you heard about it. If you saw it the first time, you were amazed. What a tremendous artist, uh, great singer, tremendous as far as writing music. But then the show itself is just a visual uh, delight. Uh, at one point, she flew around the arena and, you know, a lot of athletics with it. It's just a show that, you know, we really, really wanted to have come back. Um, you know, we've got some great folks in Lincoln that are attached to that show, and um, you know, they really helped to make sure it came back. And so it's a shout out to Bill for uh, helping us bring that back. But what, what a cool thing, December, or, uh, March 6th, it will be a huge night at the arena. Okay. And then we've mentioned Lord coming before on That's March right. 24th, but I think Run the Jewels is a new addition it since is. we last talked. And Run the Jewels played uh, over at the Maha Festival in Omaha and were a huge hit there. They've just been announced as an opener for this, so it really makes that package that much stronger. Can't wait for Lord to come in in March. It's just going to be a fun, uh, a fun month for concerts. And then April 13th and 14th, Monster Jam, a noisy time at Pinnacle Bank Arena. You know, and they're calling it the, the uh, Triple Threat Series this year. So they've got uh, not only uh, small little uh, quad runners, but then they've got kind of this utility vehicle racing and then the big monster trucks. Uh, always some great action. Eight trucks on the floor, crushing cars, jumping. They continue to do more and more tricks. Every year they come up with something new. And uh, it's a great weekend, three great performances. Uh, hope a lot of people get a chance to check that out. Now, last time you were here, you you kind of hinted that some uh, Pinewood Bowl sh shows would start to, to fall into line, and yep. there is one. You've announced one for May 18th. Impractical Jokers. I have not watched this show. I'm going to have to check it out. It's on True TV. It's a cool little show. It's a it, it's a great comedy show, and and these guys uh, are, are the, the the comedy part of this is going to be just outstanding. Uh, they had a tremendous tour last year. It was really well received. We were able to get talked them into uh, coming out to Pinewood, and uh, you know we're looking forward to Pinewood already. That's you That's know it's right. going to come around before we know it. 
Um, this will be a terrific show. It went on sale today. Uh, plenty of tickets available, but it's selling well. And comedy generally has done pretty done well out really there. really well out there. We've had some real good experiences with the comedians, and they love the setting. They feel really connected to the audience because they're right down in front of it. We'll have a great video board up on the backside. It will go very well. All right. Thank you very much, Tom. Again, Husker basketball season Coming underway. Up. Make sure you check out the schedule. Check All out the, the games teams. are listed there. Go to both. If you haven't been to a women's game, come to a women's game. If you haven't been to a men's game, check it out. It is an exciting time. And lots of good food. There is, too. <laughs> Practically gourmet. We'll That's say. right. PinnacleBankArena.com is the website where you can find out more about what's happening at the arena. And PinewoodBowlTheater.com? Correct. PinewoodBowlTheater.com. Check out uh, what other good things Tom and we'll staff have. We'll keep those have, announcements uh, coming. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. All right, Diane. And good luck to the Huskers. Yep. They'll do, they'll, right. they'll do fine. They'll, <laughs> we just need to be there and, and cheer them on. Okay. Thanks, Tom. And that is all for this month's Out and About show. I want to thank all the guests that we had today. Now, if you missed any of the events, stay tuned. We'll be running a, a list right after this show. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you out and about. <laughs>